level line under my indicator now. Strike any time. There. So you can high stick me. There we go. Yeah, just like that. Big fish. Nice work, buddy. Thank you. There it is. Whoa! Oh! 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 Wow! Dude! Welcome to this week's episode. Got a really fun one here for you. We're getting dropped off in the middle of the Alaskan wilderness to float down a river for four days to chase rainbows. Much easier for me right now. So we're meeting up with our co-host Abe Blair, but it turns out on this trip, he's also gonna be guiding a bunch. So we're not gonna see quite as much of him as we had hoped, but you know, man's gotta work. got dropped off at Spectacle, and uh, Brian's gonna go get the boys, takes a group back to camp. We go back and get Abe on our rafts, and we're gonna load up the rafts and row down to where we're gonna spend the night and start some fishing. This isn't a normal filming trip for the crew. This time, we're getting dropped off, and we're actually gonna help get all the boats and all the gear down to the first camp, waiting for the guests to show up the next day. The boys arrived. There's our boy Abe. What's up? What's up? You guys want to go do a river trip? Yeah. <laughs> Abe's been floating this river for a week or so already. He had a couple groups come in and out, and we're meeting up with him now. We got dropped off. All the logistics are taken care of. The boats are put together, and we got about a two-hour row slash drag to get to where we start fishing tomorrow. Nobody around, like to get dropped off in the middle of nowhere, no sign of humans, and, and to be comfortable and content, like it just doesn't get any better. Yeah. No. Woo! Right surfing! There goes Dennis. There Dennis go. is excited. What? No, nobody's coming? <laughs> I've been sitting here for five hours. <laughs> I've got a lot of pent up energy and I am ready to row this boat. No, we're going to camp here. We changed our mind. <laughs> <laughs> so Abe has been telling us the whole time about how many bears are in this system. Sure enough, first corner we drop into with the boats, giant bear <laughs> right there next to the river. Why do I go to Alaska? It's, it's the pinnacle of adventure. Um, everything about Alaska is an adventure and who, who doesn't like a good adventure? I mean, even though I'm up there as a full-time guide, I do still carry a very large telephoto lens and my camera everywhere I go with the clients. I mean, over the years, as I've been kind of cutting my teeth as a guide in Alaska, I've been able to photograph the bears a tremendous amount and, and learn about them. And I'm excited to be able to share that opportunity with other photographers. 
and, and provide an experience that other bear viewing or workshop tours are not really providing. I think by being an angler first, it allows me to see the bears differently and allow my photography to have a little bit of a different perspective. <laughs> this is awesome or what? It's getting to enjoy Alaska next level. This season, the water level is really low. So pushing through this top end where we have to start fishing, it's gonna take a lot of work. Oh yeah, last year I lost 18 pounds in 15 days doing this. So Alaska crossed it at its best. About 10 o'clock at night, and we've been rowing for a couple hours now. So we got uh, a little bit longer to go, maybe another hour. We're definitely trying to beat the daylight, we're trying to get there before dark. Good news is we're on a river so we can't get lost. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Eventually we'll find camp. We'll get there. <laughs> Uh, we finally made it to base camp one. Um, I have no idea what time it is other than oh dark 30. But we're here. We're gonna be the first ones on the water and that's when our dividends are gonna pay. It's gonna be awesome. Red Flintstone, gonna finish this one. <laughs> we got, uh, I don't know how many honestly, the number keeps changing, but I think we got six more people coming in. Um, a friend of mine's coming in today. And they're gonna fly in and drop into up on the tundra. We're gonna tow a boat up, but now we're setting up the community housing. Getting suited up. See if we can squeeze out a couple of fish before we gotta go back to work. Looks good. I think we got all this whole river to ourselves. <laughs> Got camp all set up for everybody showing up this afternoon. Been getting that going, had a little breakfast. Now we got the rods rigged up. Abe's gonna show us what to do. We got basic bead fishing, but this is home water. So he's actually walking up there, look, trying to find a fish to fish for. I usually just drift and walk, but he's actually gonna go hunt them down. So with this extra low water we've had the last few years, um, we've noticed the fish are not hanging in those more traditional, you know, deeper buckets. Yeah. And they're really up in the swifter, more aerated uh, riffles. And they can still get a good feeding lane hiding behind rocks. And the salmon are gonna be spawning just up above in the tail out there. So those fish, will, trout will stack into these, these riffles and they're just waiting for those eggs and beads to just come dropping down. So. I think I see a target. I like to target fish these these guys with this low water and take advantage of the sight fishing. So I think I see one off that boulder. Might have a couple more in here. So let's see we can make things happen. Fun. Sometimes these fish get in so close you can high stick them. You can, there we go. Yeah, just like that. Just nothing. It's like salt water, you know. Just don't cast until you see one. It's just fine. Yeah, there, and there's three or four more at least in here. Nice, kind of small average trout. Oh! <laughs> a freaking big fish, dude. Nice. Look at that thing. All right, this is your, you know, classic Marine River Rainbow right here cradle and show them off so much better. Are we good for a release? Yep. <laughs> Got that. All right, on the board. Ah, uh, it's the little guy. But there's a bigger one that I was targeting right here. I, this was the set, this, this was like the setup cast. Yeah, I was just trying to get it drifted into the big fish, and then this 
little 16 inch or eat this. Nice. Yeah, it's kind of a subtle trained eye and it's just looking for these, these dark lines. All this rock is so small that anything that's this this big or larger, that's straight, it kind of starts to stick out. So you just look for these like black voids where there's no rock and that's either a, a shadow from a bigger rock or generally a fish. We get to see Abe in his element here and it's so neat to see. He just is hustling up, he's got his stuff together, he finds a fish in the riffle, throws it in there, <laughs> catches it. I mean, he just hammers fish like he's a warrior. <laughs> <laughs> like a rainbow ninja. Sometimes when they're sitting, they'll feed like three feet left to right. Other times they'll sit here and they're only looking this way. Yeah, they're NASCAR fish. So you gotta like, go left. <laughs> you gotta pay attention. Sometimes you'll you'll notice you just you're right on and you're right on and nothing happens. You'll put it just a little bit outside or inside from them, uh -huh. and that's when they'll turn yeah, and eat. One just on the other side of this sockeye. Right on the bubble line under my indicator now. Should strike any time. Yeah, there. there he is. Stop. Oh. Yep. This is one of the darker, uh, more native uh, river. Once the trout have been in the river a bit, yeah. they turn into a darker color. And then we'll catch fresh lake fish. There, he's ready. They're, they're tired, pressured. Look how snaky and hungry he hasn't eaten that well. That thing is black. So this is a future big fish. He's got a big head. He just needs to eat. So he, he's been not eating well. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, that's how we do it. Dude, that's crazy.